Hey guys, in today's video, I'm just gonna show you how I sharpen for social media, also the settings that I use when I export, as well as the workflow for posting to Instagram. So let's jump into it. Let's start with this shot here. I always edit in Photoshop, therefore I usually export for the web from Photoshop. I prefer the sharpening for the web options that I have inside of Photoshop, so that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. Honestly, the easiest way to export for the web is to actually use TK Actions. This is the actions part of the panel of TK Actions. There's also another web sharpening plugin that I, I use sometimes. It's called Web Sharpener Extension Panel, and it's actually a really, really powerful little panel, but both of these things are gonna set you back. You know, TK Actions probably runs about 40 bucks now. Web Sharpener, I believe it's just to buy donations, so you could, well, Theoretically, you could get a really cheap if you if you're if you're that person, but I think I gave him 20 bucks for this It's worth every penny. It's really it's more powerful than some of the other plugins that you might use But I'll show you how to do it by hand and then can I give you an idea of what these plugins do? So first off, there's a couple numbers that you're gonna want to memorize or know so for Facebook Facebook actually prefers 2048 pixels on the long end or you could do 10,024 pixels on the long end. I always export at 2,048. Even though I don't post much to Facebook anymore, that's kind of become my de facto size that I export everything to. That's what I put on my website. It's also what I pump over to Instagram, even though Instagram actually prefers, I believe it's 1920 on the long end. Maybe it's 1080. I think it's 1920 on the long end, but the thing is Instagram, degrades the quality of whatever you give it so much that it kind of doesn't matter. People are seeing such a small version of your photo there. It's kind of like a thumbnail. So I just export at 2048. That way that's going to be good for pretty much any social media platform I post it to. So the cool thing about using TK actions is, for example, this is a vertical oriented shot. If I hit vertical, it's going to resize it. It's going to sharpen it a couple times. I can change the amount of sharpening that gets applied. I can convert to sRGB. That's going to be important. You always want to convert anything that's going onto the web to sRGB because that's the, the color space that everybody's going to be seeing it in. And then I could also even add a watermark or whatever. But for now, I'm just going to hit vertical. It's going to take this over into another file. It's going to sharpen it a couple times, apply a luminosity mask. This is a dark swan luminosity mask to the second pass of sharpening. That way you don't get these um, kind of over sharpened areas in some of your brightest highlights. It's really fast, really easy. Plus I can just hit the save button and it brings up what is called the save for web legacy in Photoshop. Let me show you how you would do it manually. So if I go back over to this shot, what I first want to do is create a merge visible layer. That's gonna be Control Shift Alt E, or if you're on Mac, can Command Option Shift E. That gives me this layer here. This gives me the current state of our photo on a pixel layer. Now what I need to do is I need to select this. So I'm just gonna go Control A. That's going to select the whole image. I'm going to copy it, Control or Command C for copy. Now I need to create a new file to put this in because we don't want to mess around with our master file we because we're going to be resizing it and stuff. So we're going to save this or put it into a new file. So I need to go controller command N for new. That's going to bring up this pop up here and you can see that it's already the correct size because it, Photoshop realizes that something's saved to the clipboard. So I'll hit create and now I can go controller command V for paste. And when I do that, it puts our photo in its own layer. So if I was to do that quickly, let me do that one more time. Control A or Command A for select all. Control C for copy. Control N for new. Hit enter. Control V or Command V for paste. So now we have our shot in a new file. That's a good thing because now we can resize it and start sharpening stuff. So what I'm gonna show you is called a resize and sharpen technique. What this does is it doubles the size that you want your final image to be. You sharpen it at that size, that way you're sharpening smaller, final, finer details, and then you resize it down to the final exported size. 
And what that does is it, it gets in the, into the finer details of the image and sharpens even smaller details than you could sharpen after you've resized. So you sharpen and then resize. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to resize the image to double what we want our output to be. So if we want our final output to be the 2048 pixels, it needs to be 4096 pixels on the long end. Let's try it. Let's go image size and we're going to go to pixels and we'll change this to 4096. So now this is a size of our image. Now we need to create another merge visible layer or we can just duplicate this layer. That way we can sharpen it and then play with the opacity or put a layer mask on it if we need to. So we're going to hit control or command J that duplicates this background layer. And now this is going to be the layer we sharpen. Because this is a destructive thing that we're about to do, we wanted to duplicate that layer really quick. That way we can mask it out some parts if there's artifacts or whatever we need to do. So now we're going to go up to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. We can be really aggressive with the level of sharpening that we're adding here because we can always just mask some out or we can decrease the opacity of this layer. So I want to do a small pixel radius. Let's try 0.7 pixels and we're going to keep the amount pretty high and we're going to remove lens blur. So we have an option of removing Gaussian blur, lens blur or motion blur. I'm going to go with lens blur. Hit OK. So now this is a single pass of sharpening that we just applied. If I turn it off, on, off, on, we can see that it looks good over most of the image, but there are some of these kind of finer details. I can't zoom in that far, but some of these finer highlight details that are happening on the rocks, like the barnacles, they're getting over sharpened and I don't love that. So that is the, the reason for the luminosity mask that TK Actions has applied. So let's do the exact same thing. We're just going to grab a darks one. If we take a black and white version of our photo and then invert it, that's what a darks one would be. And you can see if you think about this as a layer mask, it's going to mask out some of these brightest highlights that are happening, which happen to be the areas that are getting over sharpened. So we're going to hit mask and that's going to apply that luminosity mask as a layer mask. And now when I turn this off and on, you can see that those areas that were getting weird are not getting over sharpened, but we are getting a nice amount of sharpening, for example, on the rock faces and stuff. So now that we've hit this image with a nice level of sharpening, so now we're going to need to resize this down to our final export size. We're just going to go up to image, image size, 2048 on the long end, hit OK. And now this will be our final version. So if I put our two sharpened layers into a group, turn it off and on, you can see that we're getting a really nice amount of sharpening. It's heavier handed than anything you could really do in Lightroom without some weird artifacts. We're not getting any halos around our areas of contrast. But if we were, I could throw a layer mask on here, grab a paintbrush, go in and mask out areas where I might get a little bit of over sharpening halo around those areas of high contrast. Typically that's going to be areas where around the horizon where you have something dark meaning something bright. That's typically where you'll get an over sharpening halo. Okay, so at this point we need to save it or export it. My favorite way of saving stuff for the web is just to go to file, export, save for web legacy. So this brings up the older version of saving for the web and this gives us everything that we need here. So first of all, we want to make sure that we're converting to sRGB because we're editing most likely in pro photo or Adobe RGB. We want to convert to sRGB so the colors look proper. I like to have my quality up around 80 or higher. So let's go 90 with this one. That's pretty much the most important stuff. I'm going to make sure this is optimized and then make sure the image size is correct. And then I'm going to hit save. Now this is where it starts getting into my posting to Instagram workflow. So where I'm going to save this is actually going to be into a Google drive folder. 
The nice part of exporting all of my finished edits into a Google Drive folder is for one, I have access to them no matter where I am. So nothing is ever stuck at home when I'm traveling. I want to show somebody a photo or post something to social media or to Instagram. I have all of my finished edits inside a nicely organized Google Drive folder that I can access right from my phone. So that part is really nice. So I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to navigate to where I have my Google Drive folder. So we'll go into my big internal folder, Google Drive, Instagram, and you'll see inside my Instagram folder, I have everything kind of cataloged into the areas that they're from. It just makes finding images a little bit easier. Go to Pacific Northwest and then I'll be like, seal, rock, flow, and stuff. Hit okay. So now the cool part of exporting it that way is now that's going to automatically go up to the cloud. Now I can just grab my phone, open my Google Drive app, navigate to that Instagram folder, go to the Pacific Northwest folder, and then right here on top, we will have the image that we just saved there. And there's our shot. So now from here, I can just long press on this save to camera roll. And if I want to go and post it to Instagram, I'll just quickly go over to Instagram. I can select the photo. And then at this point, I'm going to do one more pass of sharpening, which I know sounds excessive, but because Instagram displays your image so small, the smaller something is displayed, the more sharpening it needs. So, you know, the reverse of that is when you're making a nice big print, you don't need to hit it with as much sharpening. So that's why a lot of times you want a separate amount of sharpening for posting to the web as you would for a print. You need to hit each, each with its own amount of sharpening essentially. So here inside of Instagram, I'll go to next, I'll hit edit. And then sometimes, especially knowing that most people are going to view this on a white background, I might brighten it up just the tiniest bit. I'll go over to sharpen and I'm going to hit it with quite a bit more sharpening, just kind of making sure that I'm not getting any strange artifacts. A lot of times I'll sharpen stuff up to like 30 or 40 again on Instagram, just because I find that it looks better. And then I'll hit done. I'll hit next and then I'll enter some fancy snazzy title, some inspirational title, tag it as Mesa Arch and then move on. So this is, this is how I post stuff to Instagram. This is also how I sharpen for the web. But I think me going through those steps kind of shows you how useful TK actions or some of these sharpening plugins can be because they'll do all that stuff for you. It's like click a button rather than selecting all, copying, creating a new file, resizing a couple times, hitting it with a couple passes of sharpening. Those plugins are a big time saver. And if you edit as many photos as I do, it's, it's worth the money in my opinion. But if we were to recap everything that I just did, first we create a merge visible layer of the image. We copy that merge visible layer into a new file. We resize it to double the final exported size that we want it to be. Hit it with a couple passes of smart sharpen. We put a darks luminosity mask on that to keep it out of the brightest highlights. And then we resize it down to the final exported size. And then we use the export for web legacy to save that, making sure that we convert it to an sRGB. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but the level of sharpening you can get in this method is far superior to anything you could do inside a Lightroom or Capture One. It's another reason that Photoshop rocks. So hopefully this has been useful. I know there'll be questions on this. I know that a lot of you are going to be like, Nick, there's no way in hell I'm doing that much work. But it's worth it, trust me, especially if you already own uh, TK Actions because they uh, have it built right in. If you guys have questions, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.